And so I want to encourage you today. Is that all right? Sometimes the words are challenging. Sometimes they're, you know, pointed and they're kind of really to a specific area of our lives. But some of this you've really heard all your life. But I want to encourage you today, amen, in the Lord. And I want to encourage you, don't stop now. Amen. Come on, some of you need to hear that today. Don't stop now. Amen. And I want to turn in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. If I'm a little loud, you can turn me down. I want to read you scripture, just talk about a little bit today, and encourage you and to send you on your way in this beautiful day. And uh, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, um, Paul is um, kind of ending this part of the letter and really makes this tremendous statement, a powerful statement to the church in verse 14, 2 Corinthians uh, 2, 14. It says, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. Those key words are always, he always leads us and he leads us to triumph and it's through Christ. Aren't you glad it's nothing that you and I have done, but it's what Jesus has done. Amen. And what he continues to do in our life. In Hebrews chapter 12, verse 12, in verse 13, he says, therefore, talking about what, what they have been through, what the nation of Israel had been through, therefore, strengthen your feeble arms and your weak knees. Make level paths for your feet so that the lame may not be disabled, but rather be healed. Amen, Jesus' name. So he talks about, I mean, the hands that hang down and the knees that are weak. Let's strengthen those. Let's take our strength in the Lord. Let's remember what God has done and take our strength in the Lord. This morning, uh, I would just want to encourage you, don't stop now. Amen. You know, when I'm going through a situation and facing some um, trouble and some problems and some issues, amen, how many know it's not always positive thinking that gets me through? It's not always those positive memes that your, you know, your family sends like a thousand of them to you. It's not those. How many know sometimes you just need the power of God? Amen. I mean, you know, positive thinking is good and, and saying those little, you know, words of the day. But I mean, how many know you need a little bit more than that? You need the word of God and the power of God that works through his word to encourage you. Amen. Come on. And so this morning, I want to encourage you. You need to keep trying. You need to keep believing. You need to keep pressing in. You need to keep pressing on and you need to keep moving forward in the Lord. Right. Don't stop right now because, amen, God has brought you too far to leave you where you are. God has done too much in our lives for us to stop on this journey. Come on. There's a lot of things that we face and a lot of things that can stop us in our, in our journey and our tracks, right? Amen. But I want to encourage you today, do not stop now. Don't stop now. Amen. Keep going in the Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you today for just, uh, uh, just this time that we have really together as the church to build each other up, to make the church stronger and healthier, and to, Lord, to build each other up in the faith. I mean, Lord, we need this so much. Lord, we've been through a lot this week or maybe this month and maybe this year. Some of us are here. And Lord, I pray that, Lord, whether it's just whatever we're going through, what we've been through, what we're getting ready to go into, I pray that we would find the strength in your word today, the encouragement in our heart, Lord, and the grace to move forward in Jesus' name. And everybody said... Amen. There's just a couple keys to moving forward in the Lord that I'm going to share with you today. Um, I, I think they're very simple. First of all, don't give up, don't give in, and don't give it away. Amen. And so how many know that uh, there's three, we have kind of, I'm going to share with you three common struggles. There's just common struggles in the Christian life. Common, uh, every day, everyone struggles with a couple things, a few things. Amen. When it comes to facing situations and going through situations and difficult times or problems that arise and trouble that comes. How many know there's just three common things? Um, and I want to share with those, those with you today. Um, number one, giving up. That we just all struggle with that, don't we? Giving in, don't we? We, we kind of struggle with that and then giving it away. And I want to just share with you about those, but in a, in a positive note today and encourage you. But, you know, when we talk about giving up and we go through something that once we just want to give up, um, the Hebrews, uh, again, in chapter 10, I love this scripture, talks about uh, the righteous and Christians. And he's talking about believers in Jesus. And in verse 38, 39, he says this, but my righteous ones will live by faith. 
Or the just shall live by faith, is what it says in the King James. But I will take no pleasure in anyone who turns away or turns back. But we are not like those type of people. We do not shrink back or turn back or turn away from God to their own destruction. We are the faithful ones whose souls shall be saved. And one translation says, to the preserving of the soul. In other words, to where we come into a place of victory and triumph. As the Bible says that we will always come into triumph through Jesus Christ, right? And so Hebrews says that anyone who turns away, that's, I don't have pleasure in them, but we're not like those type of people. We don't give up easy. We don't give in quickly. Amen. We don't give things away readily, but we stand strong in the Lord. Why? Because we are guaranteed victory in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. So Hebrews chapter 10, I love that one. But you know, I thought about that scripture and immediately I thought of this. You know, when I'm in a crisis, God is not. (laughs) When I'm going through a struggle, God's not in a struggle. When I'm stressing out, God's not stressing out. When I'm, when I'm, there's things that fear and anxiety. How many know God's not wringing his hands? Amen. How many know? Because God's got this under control. Amen. When I'm losing my mind over something, God's got this. <laughs> God's like, I got this. Amen. And so I want to encourage you today not to give up. And there's these reactions that we have as Christians that we just have these, uh, I want to say these natural reactions or these common reactions to trouble in our lives. When trouble comes our way and and circumstances that uh, really are hard for us, we have just a few reactions uh, that are common. And the first reaction I feel that we have is frustration. I mean, Jesus said in this world there's going to be trouble or pressure, but that word also means frustrations. But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And then later on, it says that this is the, the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. This is what overcomes the world. I mean, you know, Jesus said, you're going to have frustrations, you're going to have problems, you're going to have trouble. But he said, cheer up, I've overcome the world. Amen. So I love that about the Lord. But it's frustration. This is our default mode, I think, for most of us. We get frustrated, right? Come on, this is a default mode for a lot of us. This is that knee-jerk reaction to a circumstance. Maybe the finances uh, don't come through. Uh, somebody doesn't keep their word. The plans aren't going to work out the way you thought they were. You, you're not going to get that house that you thought. You're not going to be able to do that and accomplish that. Come on. And the first knee-jerk reaction sometimes is what? Frustration. And I think on the heels of that, there is discouragement. That's the second thing, discouragement. This, this reaction to trouble in our lives. Someone said, you determine a person's greatness by what it takes to discourage them. Amen. And so sometimes we get discouraged, don't we? And, you know, discouragement has this way of really kind of putting us in this real confined space of hopelessness. We get in this little tiny space of hopelessness, Right? Come on, is that how you get, when you get discouraged, you feel like this little tiny, you know, place and, and it kind of builds this seemingly impenetrable wall. You can't get over it. You can't go through it. Come on, you can't see past it. But how many know the Bible says, like David in Psalms 118, that I can run through a troop and I can leap over a wall through Christ Jesus. Amen. God's going to get me through. Come on, God's going to get me through. What seems impenetrable, what seems that just a, a wall in front of me through discouragement, God can get me through. Amen. God's Word can get me through. Amen. And so I've noticed this about discouragement as well. Discouragement seems to last forever. It seems like this is it. I'm in this valley forever. Like this is discouraging and it's going to last Forever. David said, How long, O God, will you forsake me and let my enemies overtake me? David prayed this prayer all the time. Do you pray these kind of prayers to the Lord? I hope you do, because God wants to hear it. Amen? Lord, how long are you going to wait to answer me? How long am I going to have to wait for this thing? How long until you deal with this situation for me or work for me or come through or I haven't, I haven't been there. It's discouraging. But I want you to take courage today, knowing that God hears your prayers, hears it the moment you think it and speak it. Amen. And His answer is on the way. Amen. We just can't get discouraged about it. Discouragement seems to last forever. Amen. And you know, discouragement comes with a little friend called disappointment. Disappointment usually brings discouragement. You know, my dad used to tell me all the time, he said, there's disappointments all through life. You might as well get used to it. But it's how you deal with it. 
It's how you see it. It's how you deal with it. Amen. You can either deal with it quickly or you can let that thing settle into your life and become a disappointment and discouraged. And then it can actually just ruin where God wants to take you in that thing, right? Amen. And so it, it, it discouragement comes with disappointments. And I think for as a Christian, there's really nothing that's more disappointing, and let's be honest, than an unanswered prayer. <laughs> come on, let's be honest. When God doesn't answer our prayers... When he doesn't come, like David, when he doesn't come through quickly and when he doesn't take care of our enemies right away and he lets these things go on in our life, like on and on and on and on, right? And we get discouraged through unanswered prayer. I've heard people even say that I've lost the faith. I've walked away from the church because of unanswered prayer. Wow, but how many know, I like what we've learned years ago from an old time preacher. He said, my faith needs to outlast God's silence. My faith needs to outlast God's timetable, amen? God can take his time, I'm still going to be waiting. God can do what he wants to do, I'm still going to trust him, amen? Come on, if God gave you everything you're asking for, would you still follow him? Would you still trust him? If God worked out everything in your life, would you still love him? Would you still worship him? If he took you to the deep sea, the den of lions, and the desert, would you still follow him? That's where I need to say, Lord, like Job, though God slay me, yet will I trust him. Amen. Because I know ultimately he's got the end in mind for me. And these things can bring discouragement and they can bring disappointments. But God wants to encourage you today. Don't stop now. In Psalms chapter 24, verses 7 and 8, I love this particular scripture. Psalms 24, verse 7 and 8. I love it. It says, Lift up your heads, O you gates. He's talking about the people of God. He calls them the gates. And be lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads. I found in my life that discouragement or, or that type of, of disappointment is resolved by looking up. When I change my viewpoint, when I look up, how many know when you're discouraged, what do you do? You look down. You tend to, as David said, have this, this downcast look. Or your heart, as he says, it, it drops inside. It, it, it just kind of falls. It, there's a disappointment. You have your head down and discouraged. Amen. But there's something that is healed when I begin to look up. There's something that dissolves when I begin to look up. This, uh, discouragement can be dissolved in your life by looking different, by looking up. Amen. Right? I like to think of it this way. I, when I'm discouraged, the first thing you need to do, look up Scripture. <laughs> look up. Look up some Scriptures. Get a hold of the Word. Hold on to those words. Write them down. Memorize them. Speak them. Praying. Sing them. Shout them. Amen. Right? Amen? Post them. Do whatever. Amen. Because it's resolved by looking up. And then you look around you. This is so important to look around you. Look around and see what God is doing in other people's lives. Get involved in other people's lives who, guess what? Have got things a lot more worse than you do. Amen. When you look around, you start seeing, wow, I guess I don't have it that bad. I mean, no, you, you kind of look and you see on the news the, the, the poverty in other nations and you see the, the, you know, some of the government in other nations. You say, well, we really don't have it that bad. You just gonna need to look around a little bit. Amen. Come on. And how many know God's word has a way of just being that periscope, has a way of just changing our view and looking up different. Amen. And just looking in that perspective. Someone said, if you look within, you'll de be depressed. If you look without, you'll be distressed. But if you look to Jesus, you'll be at rest. Amen. I love that. Amen. So the third thing I found is that we react is through depression. It, it's, it's a real thing. It, and, you know, I've I found that over the years, I used to feel really bad about that. And saying that to people like, man, I'm really depressed. I'm really discouraged. Amen. But how many know that's a real thing? And, and it kind of follows discouragement. And you get into this depression and it affects your mind and your thoughts in your heart, because it's something that's deeper than just the surface issues. It's something that's just a little bit deeper than discouragement. Depression really hits you in your, your soul. It kind of really settles, and it's like a cave. It's like a, a pit that you get into. Come on. Amen. But I like what Corrie ten Boone said. She said, there's no pit deeper that God's love isn't deeper still. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. There's no darkness you can be in that God can't find you in. 
Amen. That His Word can't reach you in. Amen. And so sometimes it's that thoughts in our hearts that are affected so dramatically by depression. And, and it's the things that we see and we hear sometimes that lead us into this place. But it's also the things that we can see and hear that get us out of these places. Amen. And that's why it's important to hear God speaking to you and see what God is doing and see the, amen, the work that the Lord is doing. It helps. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. When we just see and hear what God is doing. See, depression, again, just like discouragement, always puts you in this confined space of hopelessness. This small area and this corner that you get in, this cave that you can get in, and it's a small place. And see, depression really becomes isolation. How many know what I'm talking about? You don't want to be around your family. You don't want to be around anybody. You don't want to talk to people. You want to be left alone. You know, there's some people that have, have struggled with it so much that they could just sit in a room with the lights off and not think about anything for hours. They just don't want to think about life. They don't want to deal with it. They want to talk to people. But sometimes it gets you away from the people that matter in your life. It can get you away from God's Word if you're not careful. Come on, somebody. It can lead you to a place of isolation, right? And so, guess what? God says, I, the, one of the things that really helps me when I'm feeling a little depressed is knowing that God is with me. <laughs> knowing that God is feeling what I feel, that He's been through what I've been through. And He's already been there, and He's, he's into tomorrow already, and he, he knows the way out. Amen? Aren't you glad for that? And so I, I love that about God's Word and the relationship that we have with the Lord. And when you become alone in your thoughts and you become alone in your life, you just become a vulnerable person. You become very vulnerable to, to a lot of things that aren't good. Come on, somebody. You know what I'm talking about. And so you become vulnerable, and, and then you begin to believe anything, and then you begin, to, you begin to cut off people that are really important. But, you know, I believe that also depression can kind of form like a darkness in your mind and a cloudiness in your mind. But one of the things that I've always claimed in, in those times, that God, you have not called me to live in darkness. You've called me as a child of light. Lord, you have called me out of darkness into your marvelous light. I'm here to give you praise. I'm, I'm created to glorify you. I'm a, amen, the Bible says I'm a holy nation, a peculiar people. I, I, to, that, that I'm, I'm going to give praises to the one that called me out of darkness. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians is that we have the mind of Christ. Aren't you glad for that? Amen. Thank God I've got the mind of Christ. Amen. Because my mind wouldn't last too long. But because I've got the mind of Christ... I can go through the things that are very heavy for me and, and, and overwhelming for me. I love what our, our dear sister Terry Spear said years ago. She said, when you're down to nothing, God is up to something. And how many know when you feel that you're down to that nothing, we, we can have faith that God is up to something. Amen. And when the devil says you're down to nothing, guess what? You need to turn around and say, well, guess what? God's up to something. It's just a matter of time. Amen. It's just a matter of this journey, walking through this thing. God's going to walk me through this thing. Amen. I may be in this cave, but guess what? God's going to walk me through this thing. Amen. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're with me, and you're not going to keep me there, but you're leading me beside still waters. Amen. To a better place. Amen. I love that. So not only depression, but I found that when I go through things, I found that there's a level of exhaustion. How many have ever felt just exhausted? You don't get tired of, of church. You just get tired in it. <laughs> you don't get tired of the Lord. You just get tired in your walk, right? You don't get tired of Christianity. But unfortunately, some people just get so tired of, of, of church and of this and that that they walk away from the faith. You know, sometimes we just get tired, don't we? We get, we've been doing something for so long, we just get tired of it. We've been waiting so long, we get tired. We've been walking for so long, you just get tired. But aren't you glad that God's grace gives us strength for one more lap, <laughs> one more hill, <laughs> one more road? God's strength is there. He gives us that strength. Amen. Jesus said we are to pray and not faint. Why? Because even in prayer, you get tired. Even in the spiritual things, you get tired, right? Even in doing God's work, you get tired. Amen? Come on. You get tired in your marriage and raising your kids and life and your job. You just get exhausted. Amen? But I'm here to tell you today, don't stop now. Amen? God's grace is there to give you strength for one more lap, one more hill, one more road. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And not only depression and discouragement and exhaustion that we react, but there's failure. 
And some of us have experienced this many times. We just experienced failure. We came to a place in our lives where we just failed, where we, fu- we fell. But how many know failure isn't the worst thing? Quitting is. Don't give up. Quitting is the worst thing you could do. Amen? But keep going. See, because victory is a slow process for some of us. Amen? But how many know quitting won't speed it up? Amen? So victory is that slow process. Sometimes it's like we want that thing to be instant, but sometimes it's a slow process. And if I quit, I'm not going to speed that up. Amen? I'm just going to stop. And so I love the fact that as you look at Scripture, God uses failures and mistakes. God uses, now He doesn't use sin and rebellion, but He does use sin and mistake, or mistakes and failures. How many of you know I'm talking about? Look at the, the people in the Bible. Look at all the heroes of faith. I mean, they made mistakes. They were failures in, in a lot of ways. Come on, they made failures, right? But there's something that I love about the heroes of faith that made mistakes and failures. Their heart never left God. They were always after God, right? And God always honors our faith. See, God doesn't respond to need. He responds to faith. So you might have a little faith. Come on. And God responds to it. God honors your faith. If you have enough faith just to try one more time, God honors your faith. If you have enough faith just to say, all right, I'm willing to give my marriage another turn, God honors faith. Come on, somebody. If you just say, I'm willing to keep working at this job, even though it wasn't, I'm disappointed, I'm discouraged, I'm depressed over it, I'm going to keep going, God will give you strength. Amen. There's a saying in business that says that success is a bunch of failures stacked on top of one another. Amen. Amen. Ask some of the most successful people in this earth and they'll tell you that they've had equal amount of failure. Amen. Amen. And that's what, I like what Paul had this conversation with the Lord and he talked about a struggle in his life, a problem in his life, trouble in his life. And Jesus said this in 2 Corinthians 12. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities than that the power of Christ might rest on me. Wow. Wow. How many have ever sung a song like that? How many have ever testified in a life group about that? I just want to testify about my infirmities and the sufferings uh, that I'm going through. Love it. Everybody's like, have a seat. <laughs> Eat some ice cream. We'll talk. Amen. So, but, but he said this. He said that my, my strength is made perfect in weakness or God's strength. Jesus said this. My strength. Je- uh, the, the strength of the Lord is made perfect in weakness. And so the key in this verse and through failure is this. Is that your weakness is the starting point for strength. Not the main point. When you focus on your weakness. Amen. You won't have a starting point. You'll always stay there. You're stuck there. But no, understand this, what Paul's saying is that my weakness became a starting point for God's strength. It wasn't the main point. I mean, no, you shouldn't focus on your weakness. You should focus on His strength. Don't focus on your sin and your failures. Focus on His righteousness, His holiness, His power. Don't focus on your sickness and disease. Focus on His healing power, His goodness. Come on, somebody. Don't focus on where, what you don't have. Focus on what you do have. Amen. And you'll find that, amen, God will use your failures into success. And so I want to give you encouragement as we move on in this particular point. Is I want to encourage you that God is a finisher. No matter what you're going through, I want you to hear this today. God's a finisher. He that begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. God never starts anything unless he knows the end of it. And everything he creates, he says, it's good. The trouble that came your way, amen, he's saying you can get through this, amen. Everything that God allows and everything that God creates, he'll work it out, amen. It's in his hands, amen. And so like Paul, we can say that God, you're a finisher. (laughs) You're the finisher. You're the author and you're the finisher of my faith, the perfecter. You're going to get me there. You're working this thing out. I'm going to let you take your time, Lord, and do what you want to do. Use the people in my life that you need to use to get me through this. Amen. How many know God either blesses you or afflicts you with people according to your need? So many of us want to be blessed with people that give us money, but how many know we're afflicted with people that take our money? And God can use those people who lied to you, who used you, who abused you, who took advantage of you. God can use that situation, amen, in your life. Amen. 
And so I'm going to go through these things quickly. We're running out of time, so don't give up. Number, the second thing, the reaction we have is giving in. And that's surrendering to the pressure of quitting. Just giving in is surrendering to pressure, right? Amen? Come on, sometimes when we feel like, man, I, 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 I'm, I'm being worn down by, by all these things. And th- there's times that I find myself turning my emotions, my thoughts, my will over to everything else but God. <laughs> And how many know when I do that, I get in trouble, right? And so I want to encourage you today, amen, that we need to not give in. Don't give in to anger. Don't give in in, in to these things that the Bible teaches us that are going to swallow us up. Like fear and anxiety, for instance. The Bible says that we haven't been given a spirit of fear, but a power love, and a sound mind. Fear and anxiety. Lord, I'm not going to give over to this. I'm not going to give in to it. Amen. I'm going to really give in to your peace right now. I'm going to give in to your word. I'm going to give in to what you're doing in my life. Amen. Come on. Amen. There's an old saying that says, don't doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. (laughs) Amen. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to doubt the Lord. I'm not going to give in. Amen. How many know the devil is our adversary? And our adversary is very persistent. He's an incredibly stubborn adversary, which takes incredibly stubborn faith to move that mountain. Amen. Amen. So sometimes you've got to match, amen, the strength of what the enemy's coming at you with the strength of the Lord. Amen. But I love this because really, I, I, when I come to these places in my life of fear and anxiety and all these things, one of the things I take comfort in is standing on the Word of God. Yeah. Why can I stand on the Word of God? Because it's not going anywhere. I mean, the Word of God isn't going anywhere. It doesn't shift under my feet. It doesn't change. It doesn't matter what's going on. Amen. The Word of God is true, and so that I can stand on it. So fear and anxiety is something we can give into. The Bible says that we can give into temptation. All of us are tempted, and we're tempted when we're drawn away of our own lust. God doesn't bring temptation, but He allows it that we'll draw near to Him and cry out to Him, and that we'll get stronger through that thing, right? And here's what I love about the Lord, that He always always, always creates a way out when I'm tempted. How many know the Lord? Amen. I mean, just as a funny example, but amen. How many know when you're thinking about eating too many cookies, God always makes a way out. There's always celery, right? But that's kind of the way it is. And I know that's a little funny, but that's the way that is. When I'm tempted, when you're tempted, the Lord always, the Holy Ghost is faithful to always reveal another way, a way out, a way of escape. Come on, somebody. And that's what the Lord says, the Bible says that he makes that way of escape. And that's why it's important to fight the good fight of faith. And the last thing I'm going to leave with you today is giving away. Giving it away. Don't give it away. What do I mean by that? Sometimes we give away what we already have in Christ. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And sometimes we get in a situation where we're giving those away. What do I mean by that? We're trading. <laughs> There's a trade that happens. We trade our, our peace for anger. We trade our joy for frustration. We, we give it away. Come on. We give away the love of God for anger. We trade that. We take anger on us. We take frustration on us. We take all these things on us. Instead of holding tightly onto the things that matter, we give them away. Right? So how many of the Bible teaches us that we need to hold on to the precious things tightly? Hold on to the spiritual blessings tightly. Hold on to righteousness tightly. Hold on to joy and peace and love and patience. Hold on to it tightly. Amen? Amen? Don't give it away. Don't trade it. Don't trade your peace for anger. Don't trade your joy for frustration. Come on, somebody. Amen? Don't trade those things. Amen? Take those things on. That's where, and we're in a situation, don't give it away. Don't give away your joy to the devil. Don't give away your joy to people that are trying to discourage you. Come on, and, and, and bring uh, these things against you. Don't give it away. Don't, don't give your ground up. Stand in your righteousness of God. Stand in the joy of the Lord. Stand in the peace of God that rules over our hearts. Amen. Don't give those things away. Amen. Don't trade those things. Hold on tightly to the precious things that the Lord has given us. The things that are valuable. The blessings from the Lord. The spiritual things that God has given us. Amen. Amen. And quickly, I want to go through this in closing. That many people give what they have in Christ away for three things, really. Because of their present situation. It's just what they find themselves in. And I love what someone told me years ago is that your present situation is not your final destination. Amen? Amen. Amen. How many believe this? That God had your your purpose in mind long before your problems ever came into your life. 
God had your purpose and your destiny in, in mind long before trouble came. So guess what? If God had my purpose in place long before trouble came, then the trouble is only there to help me get to my purpose a little bit more. Amen. God's going to use that trouble. God's going to use that problem. God's going to use a situation to get me where I need to go. Amen. It's not something that's going to cause me to give up or give in or give something away. It's going to cause me to get where God wants me to go. Amen. I can't repeat that. Amen. Hallelujah. But so that present situation... I've heard this years ago, and I love it, that circumstances are like a mattress. You can get on top and rest, or you can get under them and be smothered. (laughs) Amen? I mean, some of your circumstances are like a mattress, and some of you are like, I can't breathe. Get on top of the mattress, that's the way it's supposed to be, and find rest. You can find rest in your circumstances. You can find rest in what you go through. Amen. Jesus slept on a boat in the middle of a storm. You can find rest. It's all, amen, what you do with it when it comes your way. And I thought about that word mattress, you know. You can create a few words from that word mattress, right? I I don't uh, play those kind of games, but I can do it here. You, You create words like rest. How many know there's the word rest is in there? But there's another word in there called stress. You can create stress out of a mattress, amen. And there's another word called matter in there. I can create that word matter, amen. And so here's what I, I learned from that lesson. In the things that matter in life, I can either find stress or rest in them. Amen. So, so let, that, let your circumstances be that mattress where you find rest in. Let that trouble, amen, those, all, that, all the things that are going on in your life, let, it, let you bring you to a place of rest in the Lord, amen. How many know that's what the Holy Spirit's in our life to do? Get, bring us into a place of God's rest, amen. Hallelujah, so I want to encourage you. So it's not just a present situation, but for a lot of us, it could be the past, it could be something that we're still living in and holding on to, the past, that really caused us to give away our peace and our joy and our, our peace of mind and those things. Amen? Come on. Sometimes I believe as people, we, we tend to define ourselves by what we've done wrong or the things that have gone wrong rather than what Christ has done right. <laughs> How many know Jesus did something right at Calvary? By the Holy Ghost, He provides what's right in our lives. And so stop focusing on what's wrong and what you did wrong and what happened that was wrong. Amen. And and again, I I love what what T.F. Tenney used to say. You can't unring a bell. It's done. You can't unring a bell. It's done. Amen. But here's what you can do. You can move on from that. And God will use those issues that you're struggling with in your present because of what happened in the past. God can use it to propel you to go into the future. Amen. He can use it for His glory, for your good, for your strength. But you can't get stuck there. Some of you are just stuck in that divorce. You're stuck in that place where that a violation, the abuse, or whatever it is, and the betrayal, or whatever, the, the, all the regrets that you have. Some of you are stuck in that place. And I tell you, you never get to where God wants you to be if you can't get out of where you used to be. Amen? So it's the past. And one of the people that I think of, and I've got to hurry through this, one of the th- people that I think of in the Bible that had a past that was really, was just uh, in the New Testament that really spoke to me was Peter. Peter had this past of denial where he had this episode in his life where he, he really came to the place that he made a bold confession about Jesus. Jesus said that, you know, everybody's going to deny me. And, and Peter said, I'm not going to, not me. You're, you're the Christ, the Son of the living God. I know who, exactly who you are. I'm not going to deny you. Well, a few hours later, the Bible says that he denied Jesus three times. To the place of cursing and swearing and anger. Just portraying, I don't know who he is. I have no association with him. I've, I don't know that guy. I, I have no, listen, I'm not a Christian. I'm telling you right now. I have, I have nothing to do with Jesus, right? He denied him. The Bible says that he, after that he wept bitterly and he repented. And then a few days later, the Bible says that Jesus had this conversation with Peter on the shore. And Jesus affirmed three times, I love you. I love you. I love you. Amen. And there was that forgiveness and that restoration and repentance. And then a month later, who do we find standing up declaring Jesus? We find Peter standing up among the eleven on the day of Pentecost, preaching the most powerful, 
bold uh, sermon you've ever heard in your life because he realized that what I did in the past, God had totally forgiven me and it's a new day. That it's not going to dictate what I'm doing on the day of Pentecost. It's actually going to be a catalyst now. Amen. I'm not just going to allow it to keep me stuck here. I'm going to allow it to keep me to stand here. Amen. Where Peter sat down. Amen. In that denial, God said, I'm going to do something new. Amen. I'm going to take your past. Amen. And I'm going to allow you to stand. Amen. In your future. Amen. I love that about this story. Amen. So Jesus on the shores, when he asked Peter, do you love me? Jesus wanted Peter to get beyond the memory and get to his destiny. He wanted him to get past his mind and get to his heart. He wanted to get past the sin and get to God's love. Amen. And so many times people can't get past that. But the Holy Spirit will help us. Amen. Through issues in the present because of the failures of the past, the Holy Spirit's going to do it. Amen. The last point I want to leave with you in closing today is the things that we give away are because of people. <laughs> There's things that we've given away joy, we've given away peace, we've given away satisfaction, we've given away these things because of people in our lives and situations that have worked through people. I think it's important that we get around the right people who speak life into your life. I think it's important that you get around people who not just, I'm not talking about this selfish idolatry that's in the world that people need to recognize me and respect me and they need to worship me. No, I'm talking about people who speak the life of God into your life. Amen. Who encourage your faith, who build up your faith, tell you things you don't want to hear, what you need to hear and encourage you in the Lord. Come on. People that are going to walk with you through difficult situations, through failures and successes. Amen. That's the kind of people you need in your life. You need to hang out with those who talk to you, not talk about you. Amen. You need to talk, amen, hang out with people who speak face to face, not talk behind your back when you leave the room. You need people that are encourage you in the Lord. Amen. Right? People. Why? Because you've had enough people in your life that will speak negative and speak curse and speak uh, destruction and speak negatively. Amen. In your life. And that can hold you back and give, allow you to give away things in the Lord that you, amen, will trade. You'll trade sorrow for these things. You'll trade regret for these things. You'll trade and you'll give up your joy and peace and satisfaction and you'll give up your, come on, come on somebody because of what people have done in your life. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to allow anybody to rob me of what God, God has for me. Amen. They've, they've made those choices. They've done those things. They said those words. Amen. But God says something different. In fact, I found this out about the Lord, that God does ne he never compares me to other people. He only compares me to my potential in Him. He only compares me to what He called me to do. And he brings me up to that place. He's, he uses the Holy Spirit in my life to bring me to the place where he's called me to. Not where everybody else is. Not what everybody else is doing. Right? Aren't you glad God, God doesn't compare you to other people? He only compares you to your potential in him. In 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9, I'm closing. Who has, the Bible speaks of Jesus. And he, talks, and he says this. Jesus has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given into us in Christ before time began. And so he doesn't compare me to other people. He doesn't compare, compare, compare me to what I compare myself to. He compares me to my potential in him, my call that's in him. And he loves me through that. And he's patient with me. And he's long-suffering with me. Amen. And he's going to, aren't you glad that the Lord works through things? That's what he does. He doesn't give up, doesn't slam doors. I'll see you next week. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not going to talk to you for a while. I'm giving you the silent treatment. No, he says, I love you enough to work through this thing together. Let's get through this thing. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Cooperate with me. Get into the word. Apply it to your life. And you're going to find victory in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the things I want to leave you with today is don't be defined by people that hurt you. Be defined by Jesus who healed you. Amen. How many can say, Lord, I'm not going to give up now. I'm not going to stop now. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. I'm not going to give anything away today. Can we stand on our feet? Amen. Hallelujah. In 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, as I said at the beginning, now thanks be to God who always leads us into triumph in Christ Jesus and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. And that's the most important thing, isn't it, about this verse? He's trying to bring people into the perspective. It's not all the trouble you're going through. It's not all the frustration that you face. There's something greater. 
It's God's glory being seen in your life. God's plan being worked out so that for other people, come on, for other people to be blessed and strengthened and, and have hope. Amen. Don't get so locked in and so buried in depression that you can't talk to other people and help other people. Don't get to the place where you're so blinded by your own discouragement and the circumstances you've been through in your past that you can't reach out to people who need it today. Amen. That's what he's saying. And so let me give you some keys, amen, as we leave here today. I want to encourage you to stay open. Amen? Stay open. Just stay open to the Lord. Stay open for change. Stay open for vision. How many of you know a bee never comes to a closed flower? you got to stay open. Amen? Stay open. Stay joyful. Stay thankful. That's what, amen, Paul is encouraging us. It's through thanksgiving. Stay thankful. Stay thankful. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if you're sick and you can't get out of bed and, and you've got this disease, you've got this sickness. There's something to be thankful for. Stay thankful. Come on, somebody. Amen. Stay with God and stay with the right people. Amen. And today, we have a prayer team that's coming. We want to pray with you. We've just been going through some things. And I don't know about you, but when I go through something, I don't want anybody praying for me that's never been through a problem. Do you know why? Because they don't know how to pray. I don't want anybody praying for me that hasn't had struggles, failures. They, I mean, they've had, they've had to dig themselves out of holes. They've gone through deep uh, things. They've gone through desert experience. I want people to pray for me that have been in trouble. You know why? Because they know how to pray. Amen? I don't want people saying, well, I don't have any problems and you just need to get over it. I don't need people like that. I need people that they were in a hard place. They cried out to God and they saw God move in such a way and change them and transform them that they know the answer. They know how to get out of this thing. They know where I need to go next. I want people like that to pray for me. And we have that kind of team praying today. And so I want to encourage you, whatever you're going through, man, come and just say, amen, I, I just need some prayer. I need encouragement. I need the Lord to just strengthen me. I need, I need strength for one more lap. <laughs> I need God's grace for one more hill. I need one more turn in the road. Amen. I'm not going to give up. I'm going I'm to keep going on. And I'm going to encourage you to don't stop now. God's been too good. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your word that brings strength to my heart, Lord, to our spirit, Lord. And that's what's important. There's so many things that are affecting our mind, our hearts, our eyes, our, our, our ears. We're hearing and seeing these things. But Lord, we thank you that you're here to strengthen our inner man. Amen. The thing that really matters and really counts is that, amen, inner man. That, Lord, it, deep down inside, Lord, is what we reach for when we're going through a situation. That, Lord, that strength, that peace, that joy. That right living, Lord, that's what we depend on. And so today I pray that you would strengthen every believer here in the inner man, as Paul prayed for the church, that we would grow up into the knowledge of Jesus Christ, in the measure of the stature of the man Christ Jesus, that we would become the church of the living God, that we can lead other people to the way. Amen. That we can bring people through, help other people, and carry the burden with them because we've carried our own burden. We thank you for it. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen. God bless you today. Hey, everyone. This is Anthony. Thank you for joining us at River Valley Church. It's our hope and prayer that this message blesses and encourages you in your walk with Jesus. If it's done that today, we ask that you like this message and subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to click that bell icon so that you don't miss out on any new content that's posted. If God's place is on your heart to give today, there's a link in the description where you can get all of that information. We ask that you also follow our social channels here at River Valley Church so that you can stay connected with everything that's happening here at the church and also in our community. Most importantly, if you need prayer, we ask that you click on the next step section of our website where you'll find a prayer request form and you can fill out as much or as little as you want. But we've got some awesome men and women who are ready to stand with you in your time of need. That's all for today. Thank you again for joining us at River Valley Church. Have a great week. God bless.